Okay, so we'll drop a field wall, run over and pick this one up, and then we can get closer and take them out. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, people. Griff here, and in this video, you're going to learn some advanced tips and tricks that will make you way better at Rainbow Six Extraction. So if you want to play on the hardest difficulty or you want to get the diamond rank gear in Maelstrom mode, here are all the high-level strategies you need. First off, this is how to massively increase damage on all of your weapons, and that's by removing the suppressor. Now that sounds crazy because why would you want to remove your suppressor and alert everything in the level? Well, that's because removing the suppressor gives you way, way more damage. Just look at the difference here, from 24 to 41 damage, that's almost double. We still want the option of stealth though, so that's why we're going to keep the suppressor on our sidearm. What you're going to do is go loud on your main gun and reserve that for group encounters and quiet on your second gun. That makes it so you can creep around headshotting enemies in the early stages with your sidearm. And then when it all goes loud, which it eventually does, you can do maximum damage to enemies with your main gun. Like if you think about it, how rare is it that you complete a mission 100% stealthily? There's going to be at least one massive shootout, you can guarantee it, so it makes sense to take the suppressor off your main gun and fully unlock its power. The next tip is to use a field wall. A lot of people have been sleeping on the field wall, but it's amazing. You basically put it down and it blocks projectiles for 25 seconds, which sounds like just standard energy wall stuff that you'd find in any shooter. But what you can do with this field wall is actually pick it up and the cooldown refreshes. So you can just keep picking it up and putting it down and over and over and not use up your field wall. Plus, you can shoot through it so you're hitting enemies and they can't hit you. You can plant multiple field walls, so if you're in an open space, you can cover all your angles and not get flanked. What I really like doing though is deploying them against Tormentors, who are some of the toughest enemies in the game, because it's just so effective to put a wall between you and the Tormentors, and it completely negates their very damaging projectiles. Speaking of which, if you're having trouble against Tormentors, just try going prone under their projectiles. These projectiles travel in a straight line, so going prone makes them ridiculously easy to dodge. Then you can just open fire until they're dead. Oh, and one extra tip to give you more feel walls or any piece of equipment for that matter is that the amount of equipment you have at the end of the mission you actually keep so for instance if you finish a mission with eight field walls your operative will start the next mission with eight this is something i didn't get at first when i first started playing the game i thought you always started with the same amount of equipment so when you're getting extracted definitely do not chuck away all of your remaining equipment to celebrate next up claymores these are very underrated for the simple fact that they hurt enemies without hurting you. You can plant one at your feet and when an enemy runs into it, they'll damage themselves and leave you completely untouched, which is great when you're defending a zone as it doesn't matter how close you actually get to your enemies. Surround yourself with claymores and have fun knowing that no one can get to you. Remember to pick up any unexploded claymores when you're finished because these can then go right back into your inventory. Next, I recommend using the auto scanning drone now this is the way i start the majority of levels all you do is drive this around and it scans everything automatically so you can see where enemies are where items are and most importantly where the objectives are this saves so much time it's unreal rather than going around hunting through each level and potentially getting into scraps and losing all your health and ammo let the drone do all the work then you can go directly to the objective and start making progress on it and it's to that, that the auto drone gives you XP for every single thing you scan and further XP when you or someone else kills something you've scanned. So not only is it the fastest way to map out a level, but it gives you XP too. Make sure someone on your team has an auto drone if you don't have one yourself. You only need one as levels aren't that big. What you do is drive your drone down one side of a level and if your battery runs out before you find the objective, you can then assume the objective is either on the right side or down the center and as an extra the auto drone doesn't alert enemies so you can get right under their noses without setting them off here's a quick tip you can use stun grenades to get blinding spores off you usually the best thing to do if you've got blinding spores on you is to get a teammate to melee you but if they're not around you can throw a non-lethal grenade 
and that's the only way to get them off yourself. So these grenades can be impact grenades, stun grenades, paralysis grenades, anything that doesn't damage you. It's good to do if there are a bunch of enemies coming at you and you want to make sure you'll be able to see them. Otherwise, I normally just let the blinding explores burst and sacrifice my vision for a few seconds. If you don't want to waste a grenade, you can also get spores off you by getting flashed by a flash mine. The effect of the mine lasts shorter than the effect of the spore, so it's the lesser of two evils. Speaking of non-lethal grenades, the best by far are paralysis grenades. These unlock at level 18 and are the main way I like to take down powerful enemies, such as this Tormentor. You can throw a grenade, stun them, and then you've got around 5 seconds to run up and perform a takedown. The reason paralysis grenades are better than, say, smoke or stun grenades is because they're instant and explode on impact, whereas there's a 3 second timer on the other non-lethal grenades. To give yourself more grenades, make sure to wear an explosive harness. These take your grenades from three to six, meaning you could potentially take down six powerful enemies in a level with them. This is even better when you're playing solo because you can keep refilling your grenades from the React tech box and potentially have a huge number of grenades, like 20. You can go grenade mad. Next up, we're improving our combat strategies and the best way to do that is by knowing exactly how the enemy AI works works. Enemies only scream and alert others if they see you, so you can shoot them or their friends right in front of each other, and if you break the line of sight, they won't go aggro, which is a really good thing to know. This works especially well through walls, so you can make a little hole and shoot them through it, and you won't trigger enemies, even if there's a group on the other side. Make sure not to stand in front of the hole though, because they will be able to see you through the hole. Again, the enemies in extraction are not like conventional human enemies. They won't go aggro if they hear gunfire, only if they see you. So you can use that to your advantage and fire your gun to bait enemies over. And then you can just shoot them one by one. And of course, you can always use your proper Rainbow Six Siege tactics and training by leaning to one side or the other and presenting a really small target to your enemy, which is good against the ones that use projectiles. This is really important to do against Proteans, who can all fire on you from distance. So lean around the corner by clicking the stick in and present a smaller target as possible. Now about the sprawl, which is the black gunk you see all over the levels. And you should definitely make sure to clean this up because not only does it slow you down, but when you're standing in it, it actually makes you take more damage. The best way to clean it up, in my opinion, is with your pistol. That way you're not wasting ammo from your main weapon. It does take a bit longer than using a fully automatic weapon, but you want to save your main ammo for enemies and use your pistol ammo on something that doesn't fight back like the floor. Of course, when you get your React laser, then you don't even need to use ammo. Just aim at the floor and the laser cleans it up automatically. You unlock the laser at level 25. We'll end the video with some weapon tips. Firstly, you can eliminate recoil almost completely by switching to single shots. Do that with the D-pad. Less fire rate, obviously, but look how stable that aim is. You can get some real pinpoint accuracy this way. And make sure to turn on aim assist so your aim snaps to enemy heads. Then it's just one shot kill. I mean, it's not perfect, it won't snap to them 100% of the time, but it helps massively to be able to just aim down sights and have your reticule snap to enemy heads. And about sidearms, if your operator has an SMG, don't worry if you don't see an attachment for the suppressor, SMGs are always suppressed by default, so you can use an SMG and you will not alert enemies. The shotgun, on the other hand, will. <laughs> So those were a few advanced tips to help make you a better extraction player. Let me know in the comments if you've got any tips you want to share. I would love to feature your suggestions in a future video. Thanks so much for watching and if you found the video useful, remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you'll be notified about my next video, which is a guide to the very best operators to use and how to use them. That's going to do it for now. Bye bye. You went to the
hell and back. It takes someone like you to prove that anything is possible. 